Hello, my name is Bill Huntsman. I'm one of the chemistry instructors at MATC, and this is a video on laboratory safety and procedures. You've been given an outline to accompany the video, but you will need to add your own notes to the outline to make it complete. The video will talk about how to work safely in the laboratory, what to do in the case of an accident, and how to work correctly so that you don't uh, damage the equipment or contaminate the chemicals. The first section of this video deals with safety equipment and personal protection. We'll start out by looking at some of the safety equipment in the lab. Now because each lab room has this equipment in slightly different locations, you're going to want to know exactly where it is in your particular lab room. You're going to need to know how to use the equipment and what it's for in most cases. We'll start out by looking at the emergency eye wash. You would use this in case you got some nasty chemical in your eye and you needed to flush it out. There is a sign telling you where the eye wash is, but if you've got a chemical in your eye, you're not likely to be able to read that sign very well, so you want to know exactly where the eye wash is in the lab. To use it, simply push the bar forward to start the flow of water. Use your fingers to hold your eyelids open in the water stream and flush your eyes until all chemical traces are gone. For really nasty chemicals, this might require 15 minutes or more, but you don't want to take any chances that you haven't gotten all the chemicals out. Of course, if you wear contact lenses, you'll have to remove them when you use the eye wash because chemicals can become trapped behind the lenses. Above the eye wash is the safety shower. You'd use this in case you spilled some hazardous chemical on your body. The first treatment for almost any chemical on the skin is to flush it with lots of water. To turn on the shower, you simply pull down on this bar, which I'm not going to demonstrate. Of course, if the chemical had soaked through any clothing, you need to remove the affected clothing so that the shower can actually wash the chemical off of the skin. Chemistry labs sometimes use Bunsen burners to heat chemicals, so there's always the chance that you could set yourself on fire. If that happened, you'd want to use the fire blanket. So notice where the fire blanket cabinet is in your room. To use the blanket, you simply take it out of the cabinet and wrap it tightly around the person who is burning and it will smother the flames. If we had a fire that involved equipment and not a burning person, we would most likely use the fire extinguisher. Most of our labs have only one fire extinguisher in the room, so you should note where it is in your particular lab. To use the extinguisher, you need to pull it off of the bracket on the wall Pull the safety pin so that the handle becomes functional. Aim the nozzle at the base of the flame and squeeze the handle, which will release a dry powder that will extinguish most fires. The extinguisher should be used for chemical fires and not for burning people. Each lab has four fume hoods that you would use if you were working with chemicals that gave off toxic fumes or irritating vapors. Each fume hood has individual controls for light, compressed air, gas, and each has a sink with water in it. The exhaust fan, however, is turned on by a switch on the wall that controls all four hoods. Note the location of that switch in your lab. It should be on the wall near one of the hoods. You should also know that in at least one of the chem labs, there's a significant delay between flipping this switch and having the fans turn on or off. I'll turn, flip the switch now, and you'll notice that you don't hear anything and it can be as long as 10 seconds before the hoods come on. There they go. And there's a similar delay in turning the switch off. So when you use the switch, if nothing happens when you first flip the switch on or off, uh, be a little patient. The hoods also have a sash that can be lowered for extra protection, but you probably won't need to do that in your experiments at MATC. The phone and the first aid kit are located on the wall near the chalkboard. If you needed to dial 911 for an emergency, you'd have to dial another 9 first, as the sign on the, on the phone says. Next to the phone is the first aid kit. It has gauze and adhesive bandages for minor cuts and burns. It's not a good idea to work in a chemistry lab with an exposed cut, so let your instructor know if you need a bandage. Disposable vinyl gloves are also available in the laboratory. Their use is optional for most experiments, but if you had an ex a cut or something like that, it would probably be a good idea to wear them that day for extra protection. Some chemicals, such as mercury, strong acids or bases, and volatile organics need special cleanup. 
The lab has spill cleanup kits that have special materials to help with the cleanup of these hazardous substances. Your instructor would be the one to use these kits if they are required. The most important piece of personal protection equipment in the lab are the chemical splash goggles to protect your eyes. It's very important that you get the correct kind of goggles specifically made for chem lab. Proper safety goggles for chemistry lab will completely enclose your eyes so that no chemicals can splash into your eyes from any direction. There are lots of kinds of eye protection available out there, but many of them are not really suitable for chem labs. Things such as glasses that just have side shields on them, or goggles that have a bunch of holes in them where liquid can splash through the holes are not adequate protection. You can still get splashed in the eye. Another example are goggles that don't fit your face so that they leave a gap between your uh, cheek and the goggle. The safest way to be sure that you have the correct kind of goggle is to buy them from the MATC bookstore. If you buy them from the bookstore, um, you can keep the box that they come in and we will store them for you in the lab if you like um, so that you don't have to remember to bring them to lab each week. If you buy goggles from any other place, be sure you check with your instructor uh, that they're okay to use in the chem lab. So when do you have to wear your goggles in the lab? The chemistry department policy is posted on the lab door and also above the first aid kit. It states that safety goggles must be worn by everyone in the lab whenever anyone in the lab is using chemicals or glassware. This means from the time you take the equipment out of your lab drawer until either everyone is finished with the experiment or you're on your way out of lab. One of the annoying aspects about safety goggles is that after you've worn them for a while, they can tend to fog up, especially if it's humid. Uh, if this happens to you, there are a couple of things you can do. One of them is a short-term solution, and that is that you can back away from the experiment so that you're safely out of the way and pull the goggles away from your face a little bit, what that does is it emits fresh air into the goggles, drier air, and it will usually take care of minor fogging for a little bit. The problem is, is that the fogging usually comes back pretty quickly, and so it gets to be a little bit old to do that frequently. A more long-term solution is to use a special lens treatment before you do the lab or in the middle of the lab if the fogging is occurring. On the shelves in this lab, we have stay clear lens tissues and we also have some things in packets called sight savers. Uh, if you get the lens tissue, you dampen it with a little bit of water and wipe out the inside of the goggle with the treated tissue. And that will leave a coating on the inside of the goggle that will help keep the fog from coming back. The sight savers are similar except that they're pre-moistened. You might decide that if you continually have a problem with your goggles fogging, you might just want to treat them at the beginning of the lab before you get started. The lab aprons are located in the upper right hand drawer of your lab station. They provide extra protection from chemical spills and they reduce the chance that you're going to have to use the safety shower. Some instructors require aprons for all chemical experiments and others make their use optional unless you're told otherwise. Your instructor's policy on lab aprons will be covered under the lab rules section of this video later on. The most important piece of safety equipment in the lab is your own two eyes. You need to be aware of what is going on around you. Because if someone around you is not following proper procedures, you could be injured as a result. So if you ever see anything in the lab that makes you uncomfortable, you need to talk to your instructor so that he or she can take care of the situation. The next section of this video deals with minimizing chemical exposure. The first item deals with appropriate attire for lab. You should be aware that the more covered your skin is, the more protected you are from getting chemicals on the skin. Now you may be allowed to wear shorts or skirts or have short sleeves in the lab, but other clothing choices protect you better. Long sleeves protect better than short sleeves, long pants protect better than either shorts or skirts. One thing you should avoid, however, is draping sleeves or bulky clothing that you could get in the burner flames or knock over chemicals. In that case, you're trading one safety hazard for another. Your instructor will discuss his or her policy regarding lab clothing in an upcoming segment of this video. Another aspect of appropriate attire is that your feet need to be completely covered during lab. That means no sandals or open-toed shoes or anything that exposes part of your feet. 
Now this is a hard rule to remember in hot weather. So one possible solution might be for you to get a locker and throw a pair of shoes in the locker that are appropriate for chem lab. That way you can change into the shoes for lab and you can wear the sandals or whatever to your other classes. If you have long hair, you need to tie it back during lab to keep it away from the flames and the chemicals. If you don't have a clip of your own, we always have rubber bands available that you can use. In chemistry, we often work with substances that are poisonous, and so you don't want to in accidentally ingest any of these. The next set of items is designed to prevent that from happening. The first rule is that absolutely no food or drink may be consumed in the lab room. There are no exceptions to this, even water. So if during chem lab you need to take a drink of something, you need to go out in the hall to do it. I think it should also be obvious that it's not safe to taste any of the lab chemicals, even if they appear to be ordinary substances like sodium chloride or glucose. You should wash your hands with soap after all of your experiments. The soap is in these pump dispensers above the sink. Another thing you should do is to wipe down your lab station before you leave using a damp sponge. Sponges are by the sink. Simply wipe down the station and dry it with paper towels so that the next student who comes in doesn't accidentally set their hands or their books in some chemical that might have been spilled during the lab. If you have any special considerations about chemical exposure, such as asthma that is triggered by certain chemicals or uh, chemical sensitivity, um, talk to your instructor and we'll do our best to accommodate you. If you have any questions about any of the chemicals that are used in your experiments, we have available in the lab things known as material safety data sheets. They talk about the hazards associated with any of the chemicals that we use. And if you have any questions, you can ask your instructor to see these sheets.